Hi, I'm Daniel Fuller from the Benet Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about blessed. So I was just reading the other day, is in Matthew chapter 5, in the Beatitudes. And I was reading it in the Amplified Version, and it has all these different definitions of blessed. And to be honest, it just blessed me as I was reading through that to see all these dif different definitions of blessed in parentheses after the word blessed. As so we're going to do a pretty simple communion meditation today, just reading through this passage of scripture and just looking at these different, different definitions. I hope it will be a blessing to you as well. So let's take a look at the scripture. So this is Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is the Beatitudes. This is Jesus speaking. And look at all, I want you to pay attention to the words in parentheses after the word blessed. And we're going to go through a bunch of these. It says blessed. What is blessed? Spiritually prosperous, happy, to be admired. So that's one definition of blessed. Spiritually prosperous, happy, to be admired. Are the poor in spirit. Those devoid of spiritual arrogance. Those who regard themselves as insignificant. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Next definition of blessed. Blessed is forgiven or refreshed by God's grace. Are those who mourn over their sins and repent. For they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Our next definition of blessed. Blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure and worthy of respect. Are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, the self-controlled. For they will inherit the earth. Next definition, blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. And then we keep on. It says, blessed, content and sheltered, I can't read it on my screen here, by the merciful, for they will receive mercy, content and sheltered by God. Next definition, blessed, anticipation, anticipating God's presence or spiritually mature are the pure in heart. Those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. Blessed, I like this one, spiritually calm with life, joy, in God's favor are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Next definition, blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love, are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever. And our last one, blessed, morally courageous and filled with a life joy in God's goodness. Are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you? because of your association with me. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So I was just reading through this the other day, and it was a, a blessing to me just to see all these different definitions of the word blessed. And so we're going to take communion over this today, just as a way to activate this in our life. Heavenly Father, I'm just so thankful for you. We are so thankful for you. To have you in our life, we are blessed. To have your peace, your courage, your joy, your love, your presence, contentness. We can be sheltered by you. I'm just looking through these definitions. Happy, prosperous, to be admired, refreshed, forgiven, inwardly peaceful, secure, worthy of respect, nourished by your goodness. We are blessed to have you in our lives. And we're just so thankful for you. And Father, we just ask for your blessing. I know you've already given it to us, but it's good to ask. We ask for your blessing on our lives in all these different ways, the fullness of your blessing upon our lives. We're asking for that today. Communion is a way for us to activate these promises of God. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. The Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. 
And in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation that sets in motion all the benefits of this new covenant. So Father, I thank you on the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We'd all missed it. We'd all turned to our own ways. We'd all done things our own way. And God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed. He was destroyed. He was smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit together with him. He made us one with him. And communion is a celebration of our union with him. A time to celebrate and remember that today. So Father, I thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. And transfers us into the light. Into the kingdom of your dear son. His blood washes us and cleanses us. Gives us a fresh start in life. To walk out this day blessed in a covenant relationship with God, with his blessing upon our lives. And Father, we're asking for you to help us to walk in the fullness of your blessing. Help us to walk in that. We thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take a juice. All right, so normally after our time of communion, we talk about some practical application into our health and fitness. Because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. Now, a lot of times we go into workouts, you're not maybe feeling refreshed. Let's take some of these definitions. Let's bring them into our workout. He's got his blessing ready to go to keep us refreshed by his grace. His grace is new every day. He's got some refreshing for our physical body. He's got inward peace. I believe it's a proverb says, a heart at peace gives life to the body. We can be joyful in God's presence. There's fullness of joy. We can be nourished by his goodness. So think about some of these definitions. Spiritually calm, inner peace. What else do we got here? Courageous and strong. How can these apply into our health and fitness? And let's start practicing those in that area of our life. And then once we do that, it's just an effortless overflow into the other areas. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.